daisies blooming Sundress swaying in the breeze I can't stop staring You've put a spell on me And I hope that you never decide to set me free The way you're moving It's got me moving my own feet feeling that I could ever dare to dream is you forever moving next to me let's not waste time or take this slow we've got miles behind us but miles to go so let's just break this down to the simplest truth Good morning, folks. So it's a beautiful day here in Aberdeenshire. So great to see the sun. I don't feel we've seen that giant yellow thing up in the sky too much this summer. So really nice to have it here today. This morning we're out in Westfield again. We're gonna do um, just another small quick animal move. The goats have been in the grazing cell that we put them in in the last vlog for the last uh, few days since the weekend. Um, we're going to move the goats on to an area where we need their help in grazing. Um, we'll move the geese on as well, but we're going to keep the chickens where they are for another few days before we move them on. And then this afternoon, we're going to spend some time in the market garden. Today is Thursday, so it's a harvest day in preparation for deliveries tomorrow on Friday. Uh, so we're going to go and draw up on the board what we're going to be picking today. So yeah, a nice fairy day, a little bit of work. Um, this morning with the animals and finishing off the day in the market garden with harvesting. So I'm just making my way over to the west field. Um, Rosa is doing a last bit of work in getting uh, this new goat cell ready. Up till now the goats have mostly been grazing on quite grassy pastures. Um, but we've got this one cell here in the west field that um, we haven't really been using at all. Uh, for the last couple of years as a grazing cell. It's this one here behind me and you can see it's pretty weedy. Over the last couple of years the bottom half of this uh, cell and, and the one next door have been cultivated for growing vegetables for the veg box. We've had it covered with tarps on and off over the last couple of years and this year we weren't sure whether we were going to grow a fodder crop for the animals 
Um, so we took off the tarp. And like nature does, when its, uh, when its skin is uncovered, we've had this big flush of annual um, weeds growing and some very tenacious perennials. So rather than uh, using the BCS to cut this down, we thought we'd make use of the goats and get them in here to browse it down for us. Um, in fact, when Mandy has been escaping recently, we've often found her up to her neck grazing in this plot. So we know they love it. There's thistles and dead nettle uh, and docks and chickweed. So lots of great eating for goats. What better thing to do but turn these weeds into milk? Okay, so Rosa and I came out last night. We used the BCS to cut some fence lines. We were really trying to work with just one of our electric nets uh, and try and make that uh, a closed cell. Um, but we bumped into a few different issues, one of them being a kind of fence that's just a post and wire fence that got in the way. So James ended up taking that whole fence down. Uh, so it ended up being a bit of a bigger job, but now we've almost finished it. We're gonna have electric net that's now been run all the way up to about halfway up the cell. Just beyond that, we've actually got quite a lot of the ground still covered and we're hoping to next year just sow some different uh, varied grass species there. So we've also sown a mixture of grasses and forbs in some of the bare patches that were left from us uncovering this plot here uh, from the tarps. Um, we just thought we'd sow them last night while we were making the cell and that's going to mean that not only do the, well, the goats kind of by walking over them they'll trample them into that bare soil um, but then those grasses and forbs will germinate once the goats have been moved on, which will only just be in a few days. We've run this fence down the side here and then the last issue we've bumped into, which we didn't have time to deal with last night and we're dealing with now, is that we've got about two and a half, three metres gap, uh, which we don't have a very small section of electric netting to fill in. And so thinking to bring the, what is now the goat shelter or the old goose hoose uh, down to kind of act as a war here but also to provide a shelter here for the goats um, and hopefully that will just fill in that last bit without us having to put a very rolled up electric net which won't be very hot. So that's the plan. So we're gonna get the goose who's goat house. Right. One of them. Yeah. This very this house that has changed its livestock inhabitants. <laughs> right, yes we're gonna go and get the goose house. Uh, no we're gonna go and get the goat shelter. Use that to block up this small gap that we've got left in the netting. So the goats have only been in here a few days. Good to move them on, get them to help us with a job, but also leaving um, a good length of grass still in the cell for the geese who are waiting up there to come in. <laughs> that never happens, ever. <laughs> it's going to be a good day. Great, so that fits perfectly as Rosa just said. Um, goats have got a shelter, they've got a grassy section here before crossing what is this small track and into the um, weedy section. So nice varied diet for them.
get some straw and then I'll put, I don't know, we could go and get the geese. So with that little move done, we're gonna head over to the market garden now. Like I was yeah. saying earlier, it's a harvest day. So I think we're gonna go and mm -hmm. actually see what we're gonna be harvesting. We're gonna write that out on the board and work out what we're gonna be harvesting today versus tomorrow morning. Probably glean how long that will take us. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see if we can fit in another market garden job before we start harvesting. So I've just come to see how the chicks are getting on, give them some feed. See they're getting much bigger now and we've been letting them out into this straw yard that the hens are usually in when they're not out on pasture. So mother hen and the chicks have got the whole place to themselves. A very exciting life for them in here I'm sure with nettles and grass and big patches of weeds that are popping up now that the hens aren't in here. But yeah, we're really looking forward to being able to get these guys mixed back into the flock. Um, not sure when we're going to do that. They're still quite vulnerable at this um, size and age. And they'll also be able to squeeze through the, the gaps in the electric netting. So it won't be the easiest to um, integrate into the flock if we did that. So for now, they're happy here, exploring, going into the compost heaps and learning lessons in life from the mother hen. All right, we've come into the polytunnel. It's very hot in here. Uh, just to have a look and see what's going on. Things have romped away over the weekend, so we've got a bit of work to do in here, but still everything is looking good. We've removed some of the lettuce that was in a row along the side of the cucumbers here. We had close to six weeks harvest out of them, and we've now just cut them down below soil level uh, and removed them. There's still some at the end uh, of a different variety, which we're still collecting the leaves from. Cucumbers are doing great, starting to form cucumbers higher up the plants now. And um, it's just a case of trying to pick them at the right time so that they're not too big. Um, so we've got some lovely 
lovely cucumbers hanging here just now. Um, so they're looking really nice. The French beans, which are just next to Rosa there, are, are cropping away. Um, we'll be doing a third picking of those probably today. The home tomatoes are out of control. <laughs> <laughs> and they're also starting to give us some ripe fruit, which is great. So yeah, this is the kind of home tomato bed. You saw some footage of the small tomato tunnel uh, that Rosa's been um, working on this year. And this was the sort of leftovers and rejects that we put in here for us to harvest for the house. And they're just starting to give us some ripe tomatoes now, which is great to see. We're going to get out of this hot tunnel. Yes. Rosa's going to take some of these uh, germinated trays of uh, vegetables out. They don't need to be in this hot tunnel anymore after they've germinated. And then we're going to head into the packing shed and right up on the whiteboard what we're going to harvest today. Right, so we're gonna just sit and think about what we can harvest today. Yeah, definitely French beans, courgettes, bro beans. Carrots, we're gonna do this Carrots, week. yes, the first Not carrots, woohoo! Love our carrots. Carrots haven't done that well this year. We didn't get very good germination rate, but we've definitely got some lovely carrots to pull, and that'll be the first today. There's gonna be salad. Yep, salad, which one? We've got some, what we've kind of some, salads? We've got some mustard, red mustard, and we've got some baby leaf kale. Uh -huh. And also we've got some kind of lettuce heads here and there that we can mm -hmm. pull the leaves off of. All right, so a bit of a mix up of yeah. some different salads coriander. from around the garden. Coriander. Now it's gonna be cucumbers for some people. Mm -hmm. This is something we've learned. Uh, every time we do a new crop, it's always a bit of a gamble, unless mm. it's really obvious, like it's cabbage heads or broccoli heads. Uh, it's always a gamble whether you're going to have enough or too much from a kind of a bed, a standard bed size. And I think what we've learned is probably to have consistent cucumbers for uh, the amount of shares that we're doing. Um, so that's about, uh, we've got about 46 shares this year. One bed of cucumbers no. was not enough. No. So um, we're kind of, it's a bit awkward, but I think with a, even though we are a relatively small size of uh, veg box still, so mm. we can afford to sometimes just be a bit... Uh, fiddly with it and we'll go through our customer list and give some people some one week and then the next week and do yeah. it very fairly yeah uh, so everyone gets their cucumber yeah. but more cucumbers next year i put the ones that aren't for everyone in brackets just so that we can keep track of how many we have that are for everyone to make sure we have enough varieties for everyone so any that are just for the larges or extra larges or for the cucumbers just a few people um we just put in brackets because they don't really count as the total number of varieties. So um, we've got so far one, two, three, six. So we probably need one or two more mm -hmm. uh, varieties of vegetable. Kale? Uh, oh yes, we would put some leafy, some large leafy green. Kale or chard? We did kale and chard last week. I mean, we could do that again, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, because I can't think of anything else pressing to harvest. No. I mean, there are things to harvest, but they can hold yeah. on. So it's good to keep them. Charge. Right, so the things that we're going to harvest today is actually most of these things because there will be there's not as many leafy greens as we were doing at the start of the season. Uh, so most of it will be today, packing in the boxes tonight, um, and then it will just be really the salad and the coriander in the morning. We'll do the kale and chard this evening so that they're really quite fresh and keep them under some uh, wet newspaper in their boxes, ready to just put in the boxes in the morning. Um, so it'll be French beans, courgette, broad beans, carrots and cucumber just now and then we'll move on to kale and chard in the early evening. What about beetroot? What are you doing? Making something. Hope this works. Good. Yep. Great. Now I'm going to put water like that. Ah. Then I'll see what I'm going to do after uh, that. You can always borrow the little watering can for the I use for the chicks. Uh, Farm games. All right, so we're going to start harvesting now. Rose is going to start picking the last of the broad beans, and I'm going to go and get the first of the carrots. So it is a nice moment getting the first carrots of the season. I'm going to use the broad fork for harvesting, just to loosen the carrots up with. 
and then I'll just bunch them as I go and chuck them into the harvesting bin. So here's the carrots behind me, a couple of beds here will probably start. A bit of a weedy plot um, because we've had such poor germination. It's much easier when you get a really good germination of carrots like we've got in these bottom two beds because they do a job at shading out the weeds for you. Um, when you've got big patchy areas it's a lot harder to keep it weeded in between the carrots that you're wanting to keep. So we've unfortunately let the weeds get away with us on some of the plots but um, it won't take long to weed them. I'll probably start with this bottom bed that's not covered and um, probably harvest about uh, maybe one quarter of the bed. So that's the carrots picked. So we're just gonna take these lovely bunches down to the washing station. Rose is gonna give them a wash just to get the mud off, get them looking nice, keep the soil on our farm. And once they're washed, we'll leave them to drip dry and then they'll get put in the boxes. So I'm just halfway through what is the last broad bean harvest um, for us. So. I think they've done really well this year. Um, they're just starting to get chocolate spot, which we seem to get every year on them, but it doesn't actually seem to uh, damage the crop particularly, because it always seems to happen towards the end of the plant's life and once we've harvested all the beans. So yeah, I'm trying to think how many weeks we got from that. Might be the fourth harvest that we had um, from these beds, three beds here, and we've always given a very good portion in the box. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed these this year. Uh, the variety is Eleonora, if anyone wants to know. That's the carrots in the boxes. Rose is just putting some garlic that we'd harvested earlier in the box. So, I think we're gonna call it a day, folks. We've gotta get on and pick a few more things. Uh, so what have we got? So we've got the courgette, chard and French beans still to pick. So I think we'll leave it there for you guys. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for watching. Please do remember to check out the Tapanoff Patreon. Uh, we've got a lot of extra content on there for those who are wanting to get a few more detailed uh, insights of Tapanoff Farm and also just for those who want to support us, you can do that through the Patreon. Bye! See you folks! Ooh.